they were traveling children's evangelists and uh, uh, they seemed to have uh, a way with puppets and kids and I, I was looking for uh, a host of a kid show so I hired them to do that. And, and they did that program for you and then did, mm -hmm. what else did they do? Well then they, they at least Jim later hosted the 700 Club and uh, he and I you know, alternated uh, on that and then, then he decided it was time to go and move on. And then he, that's when he created, I guess, PTL. Yeah, well, actually, Ted Turner created PTL. Nobody knows that. Uh, th that was our affiliate in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, Ted got mad at me because I was going to start running commercials on our Atlanta station and competing with Channel 17. And he got furious and, and uh, canceled our contract, just broke it arbitrarily. You know, he, he's known as Terrible Ted, and he... He was as terrible in those days as perhaps he's toned down some now as he's gotten older. But uh, uh, he told his manager, said, call Baker. And, and they literally came into uh, Charlotte, took over our set, our time, our audience, with our format. And that started PTL. That, so if it, if it was flawed a little bit along the way, I think it can, be looked, it can go back to its origins. What were, you know, talking about the Bakers for a minute here, what were some of the problems that the, that the Bakers created for people in religious programming, and how did you handle it? I mean, did... Well, uh, uh, I think Jim was a little uh, mentally uh, keyed up. I, I think he, he didn't have it all together uh, in those days. He was extremely persuasive and you know all that crying and all that stuff but uh, he was highly emotional and uh, uh, his wife had come from a, her name was Tammy LaValle and she'd come from a little town up in in Minnesota where they they didn't have indoor plumbing you know had an outhouse and that kind of thing and it was all this stuff was a little bit beyond them and uh, but they they were so ego driven that when they were here with us there was nothing but problem it was, it was confusion all the time just all the time the staff just couldn't stand them and then so there were problems here oh absolutely it was uh, but uh, he was very very effective on television and the audience really liked him because as i say he was very persuasive and uh, the uh, then when he decided he was going to leave and he picked up that thing down then he was you know uh, he, he, he got himself in trouble because he didn't, he didn't have enough of an anchor, I think, to understand what he was doing. He got a little bit ahead of himself. Did the fallout cause problems for people in religious programming? And no, the cost was unimaginable in terms of tens and tens of millions of dollars of lost contributions. Unimaginable, just sh shockwaves. Of course, it was so highly publicized. The media doesn't like to publicize the good stuff you do, but if you can find a scandal uh, where some lesser figure. He wasn't all that big a deal, uh, but they made him a big deal because then if he fell, uh, they would say, look, he's typical of everybody. And, and that, that I was over in Hungary and the communist newspapers had headlines about Jim Baker. Now, I mean, why would the communists in Hungary want to feature Jim Baker? Well, of course, they wanted to show religion was, uh, was, was something wrong because they're atheists. And I think they, the, he's been, was way overblown uh, his problems, but it, it was a shame. Uh, I think the, uh, I mean, to give a guy 40 years for overbooking a hotel is a little bit extreme. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, he did a lot of harm to 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 those in the religious broadcasting.